Some people will try and convince you that these two terms are interchangeable. Well, I guess they are, mostly. But there are some important distinctions that you should realize as a new developer. Mainly, let me tell you, companies don't really hire coders, they hire programmers. What do I mean by that? It could be said that coding is a subset of programming. Which is why when you pick up a book like Learn C++ in 90 Days, the author can get away with that aggressive timeline because yes, you can probably learn a coding language in 90 days. However, you probably cannot learn programming in 90 days. What? You, you have no idea what I'm talking about. I, I think I know what's happened here. This line between coding and programming is very blurry, and I promise by the end we're going to understand the distinction and why it matters. But first of all, before we even attempt to define programming, let's first get a crystal clear definition of coding so we at least understand one half of this comparison. I want you to understand that code is all about the keywords, symbols, and other syntax you see on the screen right here. You can reasonably take a programming language like JavaScript and learn and even understand most keywords, symbols, and syntax in, say, 90 days. Programming, however, is more to do with planning, designing, and ultimately coming up with the right set of instructions to solve a particular problem. Said another way, programming is a bit more of the logical thinking that you do before you write the code. And I have a good way of explaining this. Code is not really that different from a spoken language in that you could regurgitate and memorize the whole dictionary, but that wouldn't make you a good essayist or a copywriter or a storyteller. It's practically useless, actually. Equally, you can learn, memorize, and frankly, even understand every feature in JavaScript. On paper, you'd be an expert at JavaScript, but you would not necessarily be a good programmer as a result. Remember, companies don't really hire coders, they hire programmers. That's why if you go on YouTube and you watch a Google whiteboard coding interview, the interviewer will often tell the candidates, you know, use any programming language you like. We, we don't care. They don't care if you know a particular programming language. They care that you can program, which is to think logically, consider edge cases, and come up with instructions that are efficient and correct. Programming is something that takes many, many months to become skillful at, and arguably a lifetime to master. Meanwhile, you can learn the basics of any programming language in a few months, and frankly, after six months to a year, nobody will be able to tell you haven't been doing it your whole life. I don't want to sort of like bog you down with definitions or bore you with too much of a history lesson, but it is helpful to understand that when I say, you know, companies don't hire coders anymore, they, they used to many decades ago. If you go back to the 60s, teams apparently, I, I wasn't around, teams apparently would hire coders to implement and code the logic devised by programmers because they were using much more difficult early versions of languages like machine code, basically, that was considered a waste of the programmer's time to implement. You have to understand that every single year and decade since then, programming languages, tools, and editors have evolved to become so productive that the person doing the programming can just as easily do the coding. And actually, it's to everyone's benefit as you can sort of code to create prototypes, reduce communication head overhead, and generally just be a lot more productive. It's also true that sometimes by writing the code, you're using it as a scratch pad to think through the logic. This history is kind of useful to understand because some boomers, believe it or not, they'll get offended if you call them a coder, like it, you know, because it's something less than programming, it's part of the subset and something that's delegated. That there's really no room for this anymore in our industry. It's also like the phrase you might have heard, which is code monkey, which sort of describes a person who takes, you know, logic from a programmer, right, and just has to input the code as if all the thinking has been done for them. Programming and coding are one these days, I have to say, and there's really no room for this sort of terminology in today's industry. The key takeaways here, and the reason why this distinction is genuinely important still, is that books like these just set wrong expectations, cause people to feel discouraged and ultimately burn out. You have to understand, they're talking about coding and learning the syntax of a language, not about programming necessarily. Secondly, many new developers get hung up on the language they're using or the framework, but I have to say, in the grand scheme of things, you know, considering your ambition to be a long-time professional dev, in the grand scheme of things, 
the language you pick is fairly irrelevant. The way I look at it is that an if statement in JavaScript, say, it is really very similar to an if statement in C++. What we're looking at here is purely code, nothing to do with programming really. This is just syntax. These are constructs within the relevant coding languages. The underlying computer programming idea here is control flow, which is to think about the order in which individual instructions are executed or evaluated. Wrapping your head around control flow is the hard bit. Sort of knowing what syntax to use is relatively easier. It's still not easy though, mind you. Another example that I remember well is, is learning arrays because I just couldn't wrap my head around like why they started at zero instead of one. And then I was thinking like, why do I need an array? I can just do, you know, var one, var two, var three, var a hundred, right? Understanding the concept behind arrays and, and internal loops, which are also part of control flow, by the way, was the hard part. You know, learning the syntax was tricky at the time too, and you might still be at that stage, but at least I could reference that in some documentation or a book, right? And you'll generally find that to be true. It's kind of easy not to remember everything about a programming language and just cross-reference it. But when it comes to thinking logically, that's not really something you can as easily do. You can learn about a few concepts in programming logic, right? And use them as the building blocks for your solutions. But generally, it's just something you have to practice, practice, practice by solving your own problems. And generally, I recommend you do that through building projects that interest you rather than leak code and things like that as that experience is more similar to what you'll get paid to do as a junior developer or a freelancer or possibly building your own product right going back to my point about how programming languages are fairly inconsequential well once i mastered those two concepts for example when i switched programming languages i brought all that logical thinking with me allowing me to ramp up sort of quicker and again we saw that with the google interviews right the language itself is something most smart people can pick up on the job within a couple of months and as i say after a few months or a year nobody will never be able to tell you haven't been doing it your whole life as a new programmer my advice to you is to pick one language and maybe a framework probably react in JavaScript and just stick it out unless you've got a really good reason to change. This is because if you hop around too much, you just kind of fragment your learning. I appreciate this might confuse things more than it clarifies things, but the truth is while you're coding, you will invariably learn some programming as well. You might not learn the underlying ideas and the fancy terminology like control flow, for example, maybe that's not something you'd heard before today, but it doesn't really matter because if you put your head down for a few months and you build some projects and you follow some courses, especially on Scrimber, by the way, you'll put your head up and you will all of a sudden find that you have this ability to think logically through problems. Programming is thinking about thinking through the problem. You know, your program input, what it needs to look like, what edge cases there could be, how to then process that input efficiently and correctly. Once you've done all that thinking, you can write the code. And, and to be honest, like when you have a very tricky coding problem, you might choose to think through it, maybe write, write pseudocode on paper to think through the instructions. But as I say, because the gap between programming and coding has sort of closed over the decades, many of us will choose to use code as a way to explore the idea and sort of uh, use it like a scratch pad, I guess, and eventually solve the problem. It's not surprising, is it, that these two terms get confused, but I hope I've done a good job so far explaining the difference. And if you agree, please consider liking the video. I want to wrap up the video with just one more example that I think is going to solidify your understanding if it hasn't already set into place. Say you use a visual tool like Scratch. This is a really popular app, by the way, that you can use to build programs without writing any code. Maybe you see where I'm going with this. You can express control flow or conditional logic, but you don't use an if statement like you would find in JavaScript or C++, like in my previous example, because they're coding things you use a visual diagram. You're programming, but you're not coding. Another classic example, although I wouldn't really expect you to know it. I mean, classic like old, not classic like Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, I'm talking about Jacquard's Loom. You might recognize these traditional punch cards from the olden days of computer programming, um, but they don't actually stem in concept from computer programming. They stem from this machine in which the weaver could program the machine to produce exactly the design they wanted repeatedly. In a sense, the weaver was programming the machine, which as you now know, is to create the instructions. But these instructions were not provided to the machine with code. Instead, they used a punch card. They were programming, but not coding. And just to bring things full circle and use like a very uh, re relatable, I would say, example, you know, think about programming a heater in your home, for example, or an AC unit. 
It's a trivial example, but you come up with the instructions. You say at 8 a.m. set the temperature to a toasty 21 degrees. You then provide those instructions to the machine using a digital interface instead of code. You're programming, but you're not coding, right? In closing, coding is a very important skill. And when you think about clean code or refactoring code or structuring code, the, these are sort of things that matter a huge amount. I would just say that programming must be more important because programming is about logic and if you have the wrong logic, you can't have the right code, essentially. But they are equally important, and it's not at all surprising that these two terms get conflated because they have essentially become one. Almost all the time when you're writing code, you're using it genuinely like a tool to explore the instructions. You don't write pseudocode, you don't necessarily reach for a piece of paper and come up with the logic. The tools are so efficient and productive, we do it in the same place. But, but of course, there's always going to be examples of like quite tricky, hairy problems where you might benefit from taking a higher level view using a piece of paper or you know whiteboarding with a friend, for example. I've been Alex Burke. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, again, please remember to like it and also subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can also check out my podcast where I speak to newly hired developers as well as industry experts about learning to code and finding your first job in tech. One last time, thank you for watching.